federal law enforcement to uh, using unmarked vehicles to grab protesters off Portland streets. Let's be honest. There's a word for this. It's black bagging. <laughs> yeah. The story. I'm just going to I'm not going to bear the lead on this one because I think it's hilarious. Unmarked vehicles pull up. Feds jump out and then walk up to Antifa and just snatch him up. Gone. So I haven't spoken about Tim Pool at all on my channel. I'm pretty sure I haven't even mentioned him. But you guys know I'm on Twitter a lot, so go follow me at The Cavernacle. But basically, if you are on politics Twitter, it's pretty hard to miss Tim Pool or at least miss the Tim Pool clips page that constantly posts clips of how wrong he is. And with all the stuff about Governor Whitmer and the plot to kidnap her and the misinformation he was pushing about that, I thought it'd be a good chance to really go into his antics on Twitter and YouTube as well and talk about how dangerous they are and how it's so insane that Twitter still allows him to operate on their site considering they've banned people for similar offences. And I'm going to focus largely on this Whitmer stuff, but we're going to talk about how he essentially just pushes far-right propaganda and platforms people on the far right. And that is either from his genuine political beliefs that might have evolved, or we're seeing a Dave Rubin type situation where he you know, might sort of believe this stuff, but it's clear he is sold out for, I guess, relative fame and money. So Tim Paul wears a disgusting beanie he never takes off, and I guess because we're making a video on him, we've got to wear a hat as well, so it's like the antithesis to the lame uh, hipster beanie. We'll wear, you know, a backwards cap because we're so cool. Now, Tim pretends he's like Mark Zuckerberg and just has like the same beanie like multiple times. I'm not gonna lie to you, this is my only hat like this, but don't worry, I'm not disgusting like Tim and I do wash it. So Tim Paul gained relative fame back in the day because he was a part of, you know, the Occupy Wall Street protest and he filmed it. Later, he would go and work for Vice as a journalist before, I guess, starting his YouTube career full time. He has multiple channels, two of them have over a million subscribers. So yeah, he is successful in, I guess, making entertainment because I wouldn't really call a lot of his stuff news anymore. Now, he's defended himself a lot over the years because he's constantly photographed with people throwing white power signs or people like Laura Southern. We lead many to speculate that he does share these politics, despite him saying he is left-wing or at least a liberal, despite him supporting Bernie Sanders in 2016. But it's clear from the content he makes and the stuff he tweets, he isn't helping any left-wing or liberal cause. He's just actively promoting conservative causes and a lot of the time far-right causes. Now, despite his sort of pathetic appearance, this video is going to be talking about how dangerous this guy is so I'm going to focus on the militia plot to kidnap Governor Whitmer and how Tim Pool pushed all this hatred against her for introducing lockdown measures early, which lots of countries did and lots of states did. So of course I'm talking about early lockdown, so this is the start of the pandemic. So Tim Pool made multiple videos criticizing her. So here is one and I'll show a few clips as well as read some of the titles. So, so Michigan Democratic governor faces massive protests from conservatives over draconian lockdown. Welcome to the authoritarian lockdown, notably those of you in Michigan, because things seem to be getting really, really bad. Governor Gretchen, uh, what's her name? Gretchen Whitmer has been getting slammed so much so that even NBC News had to admit it. Michigan Governor Whitmer faces fierce backlash over strict stay-at-home order. Quote, we're responsible adults and can be trusted to go out in public, said one critic. Apparently, this is the harshest lockdown we have, we have seen yet. If Joe Biden picks her, what will already have been a terrible campaign will become a substantially worse campaign. People do not like what she's doing, right? Whether it's conservative or otherwise, they don't get it, though. They think they're smarter than you, but they're not. They're morons. That's why we can't have authoritarianism. Because everyone is a moron. Sorry, everyone's stupid about certain things. We can't rely on one person to know everything. Not Donald Trump, not Governor Whitmer. So say no to authoritarianism. I'm not going to tell you to protest or not. I'm just going to say these people have lost their mind. Also, before we move any further, can we just talk about how lazy these right wingers are when they make content? Literally the same as a quartering video. He just sits there and reads an article and reads tweets and barely has much analysis. 
but just, I guess, signal boosts a lot of far-right and conservative opinions. So here's another one a bit later. So he boosts another Daily Mail article saying about, you know, Governor Gretchen Whitmer. So the title of the video is Democratic Governor Calls Anti-Lockdown Protesters Racist. We all knew it was just a matter of time until they started saying anybody who wants to see the economy reopened must be a racist. And now, of course, it's coming from the one state we probably all predicted it would come from, Michigan, where the governor, uh, Governor Gretchen Whitmer, says it depicted some of the worst racism and most awful parts of U.S. history. She slams anti-lockdown protesters at Michigan Capitol and says their Confederate flags, nooses and swastikas are not representative of who we are. Similar time, Tim Paul also tweets out, Gretchen Whitmer is an evil, evil woman. Now, I typed this into Twitter and it seems that he might have deleted this tweet. But again, Gretchen Whitmer is an evil woman who deserves all this hate directed at her by Tim Paul and her fans because she implemented a strict lockdown seen in many countries. It's very similar to the one we had nationwide in the UK. And she's evil because of that. She's e evil for putting you know, a stay at home mandate in. And of course, need I remind you that right wing militias then stormed the Capitol building in Michigan. Legislators there said they feared for their lives. So thanks to Tim Pool for boosting all these narratives about her and directing the ire of many right wingers against her. And of course, Donald Trump was one of the people who was also doing this. So on the surface already, you see how Tim Paul is a real source for misinformation and targeting people. So obviously the FBI later did stop a plot to kidnap the governor, which is a pretty crazy plot. And I will read you the details of that later. But when it got first announced, they busted the plot. Tim Paul said, lol. And Spike Lee is all like civil war is a coming. That's, you know, ironic coming from him who constantly talks about civil war happening in America. Literally has said it is coming and you should get ready for it. But then he also makes a video saying, anarchist group arrested for plotting to kidnap Michigan governor. So obviously Tim Paul has directed a lot of the hate against her himself. A lot of the hate of his right wing fans. Signal boosted right wing outlets. Signal boosted the president talking about liberating Michigan. Encouraging these right wing militias to storm the Capitol building in these protests against the lockdown measures. But now Tim Paul is trying to spin it as it's actually a left wing thing. You know, it's anarchists who are doing that. Now we're going to get into who this group are, but they definitely aren't left wing and they definitely aren't anarchists. So Tim Paul is essentially having his cake and eating it too. First of all, he's talking about how great the conservatives are for protesting these draconian measures to stop the spread of a deadly pandemic. And when, you know, these people plan to kidnap her and potentially kill her, well, then it's left wing people doing this. So we're just going to talk about the case quickly. So Fox 2 Detroit, 13 men face conspiracy terrorism charges in plot to kidnap Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer. Michigan Attorney General Dana Nassau and the U.S. Department of Justice have filed charges against a total of 13 men, six on the federal level and seven on the state level, with multiple charges, including domestic terrorism, and conspiracy. So according to the complaint filed by federal authorities, the men were planning to kidnap the governor from a private residence in West Michigan, set off improvised explosive devices to slow the response of police, and then take Whitmer to a secluded area of Wisconsin where she would be tried for treason. Federal authorities were able to stop the plot using secret informants who sometimes wore wires. The six men charged in federal court plotted for months, consulting and training with members of groups that federal authorities described as a militia and undertaking rehearsals in August and in September. According to an FBI affidavit, they were arrested Wednesday night and face up to life in prison. But now let's talk about the specific politics of this group. There is no evidence they are anarchists whatsoever. The evidence really points to them being far-right libertarians who just hate all government. Tim Paul basically said, because one of them said Donald Trump was a tyrant, because he hates all government, not just, you know, the current government, that means he was an anarchist. So let's get into this group. So they're called the Wolverine Watchmen. So militia linked to Whitmer kidnap plot has boogaloo ties. Experts say the Wolverine Watchmen group, who were the group involved in this plot, appeared to be part of the increasingly extreme boogaloo movement preparing for a civil war. Alleged Wolverine Watchmen ringleaders charged Thursday under state anti-terrorism lords identify as boogaloo boys and were preparing for a violent uprising against the government or 
impending politically motivated civil war. So Joseph Morrison was one of the founders of the Wolverine Watchmen. So Morrison and another one of the leaders, Pete Muzico, who investigators say founded the Watchmen and hosted training exercises at their shared home in Jackson County, allegedly began recruiting members through Facebook as early as November 2019, but then used private and encrypted channels to communicate and set up paramilitary training operations. The group appeared to grow this year in a response to the pandemic and the lockdown. Now here's Pete Muzico with a Trump hat in a 2018 video. And, he, and the article also goes on to talk about, you know, the increase in these types of militia that are ultra nationalistic and they're ultra, ultra you know, anti-Muslim, but they're also really, really anti-government in all forms. And you tell me, does this guy sound like an anarchist or does he sound like someone on the far right? So in a series of since deleted YouTube videos, Mazzico suggested he tried to interview Whitmer about her high auto insurance prices, argued seatbelt laws unfairly restrict personal freedom, and he complained about President Donald Trump's critics. I'm so sick of hearing about Donald Trump, Donald Trump, Donald Trump, Mazzico said. In one video he put out before putting on a Trump 2020 hat, he said, see that hat right there? I hope that triggers a whole lot of people. Mazzico also appeared to maintain a profile on Gab, a far-right social media site under the handle PatriotPete77. Again, Patriot Pete on Gab. That sounds like an anarchist profile, doesn't it, Tim Paul? So in another post on Gab, Muzico alleged that they are killing white people in South Africa, echoing what the ADL has labelled as a long-standing and false claim circulated by white supremacists. And you guys will remember, if you've been around on you know, YouTube and the internet that long, that was, of course, a very, very popular myth, the far-right push. Again, anarchists are not talking about, you know, the government of South Africa that are primarily black killing white farmers and all this crap. But of course, Tim Paul clung to this thing to label all the Wolverines as, as anarchists because Brandon Caserta, charged by the FBI in the main plot, reportedly called Trump a tyrant in a recently deleted social media video, but in another, he wore a Hawaiian shirt, the uniform of the Boogaloo movement. So this just shows how dangerous Tim Paul can be and how he pushes fake news and misinformation. You know, this guy's meant to be a journalist and he can't even work out that this Wolverine group are far right and not anarchists and they're libertarians. I know maybe there's some crossover with anarchists and libertarians not wanting this state. Of course, when you read what the main people involved in this plot think, the social media places like Gab where they're active, the things they talk about, it's not suddenly undone because maybe one of them doesn't like Donald Trump. And then, of course, Tim Paul was pushing this hate on the governor herself. And someone said on Twitter that one of them actually did like Tim Paul videos. And honestly, that's not surprising. But it's just so shameful to be signal boosting this hate and then act like the people who act upon the misinformation and vitriol you're pushing are somehow leftists. It's just, you know... Do you have no shame and it's clear you're either selling out for money or you're just very stupid? So that is just the most notable incident he's done in, in most recent months. But if you guys are on Twitter, you know the trifecta of spreading fake news about Antifa is Tim Paul, Andy No, and Ian Miles Chong. Now recently, a security guard shot a Trump supporter after the Trump supporter maced him. But Andy No, who is the editor of the Post Millennial, just spreading fake news about Antifa, he said that the guy who killed the Trump supporter was Antifa. Of course, Tim Paul signal boosts this. So here you have the Post Millennial saying, breaking, alleged Antifa militant shoots and kills conservative at Patriot Rally in Denver. Tim Paul writes, holy fuck. And then Andy No obviously also said, someone associated with the Black Lives Matter Antifa protest shot and killed a man today. And then the Denver Police Department said, further investigation has determined the suspect is a private security guard with no affiliation with Antifa. Additional information will be released as it becomes available. Now, it just shows you how quickly fake news spreads and how muddled the narratives are. Again, is this guy a journalist spreading fake news from a guy you know always spreads fake news about so-called Antifa groups like Andy No? I guess, fair enough, Tim Paul did try and clarify it, so he tweeted afterwards, the Denver security issue is a vocal Bernie supporter, leftist, and Occupy activist, Occupy activist, which Tim Paul was himself, he doesn't seem to be Antifa associated, either way, Nine News should have vetted this person and not hired a political tribalist who said left is best to go armed to a counter protest. So again, Tim Paul, who actually went to the Occupy protest, filmed them, 
and got fame from them is saying that you can't have a job if you went to it. So that would put him out of many jobs if I guess he didn't work for himself. So there is so much to cover with a Tim Pool video about how he promotes the right wing, but I think this last part just puts a nice bow on this video. So recently he had the leader of the Proud Boys on his channel and live streamed them talking. Basically what we wanna do is just make better men in general, better brothers, better husbands, uh, better fathers. Um, Everything else after that is auxiliary, right? Um, and I think we focus on more the celebratory aspect of the West instead of the defend aspect of the West, but we do, we do do both. Yes, are we crude? Are we everybody's cup of tea? Absolutely not. We cuss like sailors and it's taking everything inside <laughs> of me not to cuss <laughs> right now. Thank you. Um, I, uh, I was in Portland and I saw a black proud boy and Antifa was screaming the N-word and other words at him, and it was just, like, shockingly gratuitous. And he snapped, uh, he snapped, he pulled away from the group of uh, the Trump supporters who were marching, and he went to cross the street through the police line, and I saw another proud boy run up, grab him, hug him, put his forehead to him and said, don't let them get to you, we're brothers, your race doesn't matter, you're here with us, ignore them. And let's remember, the Proud Boys are a supremacist group, they call themselves Western Chauvinists, Tim Pool likes to say, because there are some minorities involved, that they aren't white supremacists. Well, they are American supremacists, and the only thing, I guess, is that they don't care about the color of the skin so much, but they are a far-right group that are obviously pretty indistinguishable from what white nationalists want in many ways. There are a few subtle differences, but going around and beating up left-wing protesters and joining with all these alt-right and Nazi marches probably show that you're not too different from them. So let's conclude this video. Obviously, what Tim Pool does is super dangerous. I think people like him, Andy No, and Ian Miles Chong should be suspended off YouTube and Twitter because of the violence they push by spreading this misinformation, by signal boosting conspiracy theorists, by signal boosting, you know, obviously far right militia groups and Obviously, Tim Pool has his role in directing this hate against Governor Whitmer herself. And if Twitter is to be consistent about, you know, anti-violence and anti-hate, people like this should be removed. And Facebook has recently removed a load of QAnon stuff. They should remove a lot of this stuff as well, because it is conspiracy theories designed to incite hatred. Now, whether Tim Pool believes all this stuff or not, I don't really know, to be honest. It's clear that by talking about all this stuff and by pushing these conspiracies, he's got way more successful. He's got way more money, I'm guessing. His YouTube channels have grown significantly. Of course, it's kind of contradictory with his history. But I think with a lot of these people, they're just opportunists. They see money and their political beliefs don't really matter. They're malleable as long as they can get success and fame. I think that goes for people like Tim Paul and Dave Rubin. Now I will take off my Tim Paul responding hat for the last part of the video. So if you like the channel, please like this video, maybe subscribe. If you want to check me out on social media, at The Cavernacle on all social medias, mainly Twitter and Instagram, please come join my subreddit, r slash The Cavernacle, and my personal reddit is u slash Tommy Cahill, 1995. If you want to check out my Patreon and support my work, that is in the description along with my podcast and my Medium and my WordPress. And if you made it this far, thank you for watching.